Gentlemen, uh, translation is available uh, if you need it. Uh, the numbers are on the board behind us. Uh, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, this media event concerns the call to action by a large group of like-minded transport ministers, several of whom are here with us now, to condemn the Russian Federation's military aggression against Ukraine. It is a prelude to tomorrow's ministerial roundtable, which will discuss how to turn this call to action into tangible outcomes. My name is John Parkinson. I'm the International Director in the UK Department for Transport, and I've been asked to moderate this session as the UK chaired the group of like-minded countries that developed this commitment. We will proceed as follows. Shortly, I will invite Irina Kacheruk, Director of the Department of International Cooperation and Investment Policy in the Ukrainian Ministry of Infrastructure to speak on behalf of her minister, Alexander Kubrakov. Minister Kubrakov uh, cannot be with us today, but he will be here for tomorrow's ministerial roundtable. I will then ask my own Secretary of State to introduce the call to action, and we will then hear the views of ministers from Germany, the United States, Poland, Lithuania, and Canada. After that, uh, we will take questions. But first, Irina. So, uh, dear ministers, dear participants uh, of the summit, let me, on behalf of the Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine, Alexander Kubrakov, to make a statement from our country. The Russian Federation has been launching missile strikes on peaceful Ukrainian cities since February 24, destroying all of Ukrainian transport infrastructure. Russia's large-scale destruction of Ukraine's transport infrastructure makes international transport corridors inoperable, disrupts logistic chains, blocks transit, and severely limits the transport potential of not only Ukraine, but also other countries, which in turn threatens global food security. Today, Ukrainians need to cover several hundred extra kilometers to get to the center of Europe. However, we are on the way to our victory, like us, like me, like all of us. Despite the daily missile strikes on Ukraine's transport infrastructure, we are on the way to Leipzig, and unfortunately the minister cannot be physically right now here, but tomorrow he'll be present with all of us at this conference. We are sincerely grateful for the support of the United Kingdom, Germany, the United States, Lithuania, the, initi uh, the initiators of the call to action and all the countries that have joined this document. And the minister was not indifferent in these difficult times. All the measures outlined in the document are crucial to us. I want to express the hope that together we will be able to stop the aggressors and restore safe, secure transport links for the development and prosperity of our states. Thank you for this opportunity and glory to Ukraine. Slava Ukraine. Grant Shap, Secretary of State for Transport, the United Kingdom, to speak. From there, from there. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Thank you very much indeed, and uh, good afternoon to uh, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us today. The transport, I think, is an overwhelmingly positive uh, force for our world. It drives trade and enterprise, it supports travel and tourism, and so more and more people than ever before can move around the world and experience different horizons and cultures, and it binds nations together for the common good. And that's why in taking over the presidency of the ITF, the United Kingdom will spearhead measures uh, to modernize, strengthen, and of course, vitally decarbonize uh, transport uh, around the globe. But access to international transport network is a privilege, and it requires countries to act in a responsible and a respectful way to each other. So we cannot stand back when one state, entirely 
unprovoked, entirely unprovoked, attacks another, killing thousands of innocent people and uh, breaching international law and breaching the UN Charter. The United Kingdom, along with all of our partners, stand together in condemning the outrageous actions of Vladimir Putin and the Russian military in Ukraine. And like most of the world, we've reacted with horror to the destruction of cities and the appalling suffering of the Ukrainian people. Along with my colleagues, I've spoken regularly to Minister Kubrakov uh, to hear firsthand about the difficulties that the uh, destruction is creating uh, to the infrastructure, the transport network, their ability uh, to provide provisions to the people. And Vladimir P Putin completely underestimated the unity and the solidarity of the international community. And that's why we continue to work with our allies to further isolate Russia on the international stage and clamp down on the regime with a comprehensive package of sanctions which continues to go further and become deeper. Of course, both Russia and Belarus are members of this international transport forum. And although it's important to stress that the ITF's general rules do not include measures to suspend or exclude members, we should remember that the forum has a stated purpose, and to quote, to work for transport and improve people's lives. The targeted destruction of one nation's infrastructure in particular, its transport system, clearly, clearly contravenes the foundations upon which this ITF is built. And unlike in previous years, there'll be no ministerial declaration, therefore, at the summit's end, as there's no consensus given the constitution of the ITF. But despite that, uh, we cannot allow reference to what is going on in Ukraine uh, to escape us. And therefore, the UK, together with a like-minded group of countries, have produced a call to action document to express our views at this summit. It calls upon the Russian Federation to immediately cease its military action and withdraw its forces from Ukraine's territory, all of Ukraine's territory. It condemns the heinous acts and atrocities committed against the civilian population, and it commits to ending all ITF cooperation with the Russian Federation and the Belarusian regime. The call to action applauds the initial steps already taken at the extraordinary meeting of the ITF, the Transport <coughs> Management Board, earlier this month. And at that meeting, more than 85% of countries present voted in favour of measures to significantly limit the participation of Russia and Belarus uh, in international transport forum. The measures have come into force with immediate effect, and they'll stay in force until further notice. However, we recognize that the general rules need to be adapted to meet the unprecedented circumstances in Ukraine. So we commit to re-examining and developing the general rules in a way that would strengthen the organization and create greater flexibility to deal with similar challenges should they occur in the future. But can I also make this simple plea? to use our combined strength through the ITF to help government of Ukraine. And I know that Minister Kubrakov will be here representing them tomorrow. And particularly those who will participate in the rebuilding of Ukraine's transport system and infrastructure after the war. We need to emphasize the need for that joint effort to unblock Ukraine's trade routes and seaports in the Black Sea. And it's particularly crucial right now to free up the flow of agricultural goods to prevent a food crisis in Ukraine, which could otherwise be very serious. It's a matter of great regret that at a time when ministers have come here to Leipzig this week to help reopen, reopen global transport networks as we recover from two years of the world's most appalling pandemic, that so much of our attention is by necessity and by moral duty focus on the unfolding tragedy in Ukraine. But we will not lose sight of the critical work that the ITF is doing. We're making transport safer and more secure. We're bringing investment and jobs to 
less prosperous regions by improving transport connections. We're rebuilding supply chains in the wake of the devastating COVID disease to reduce transport costs and help with the costs of living. And of course, critically, as I mentioned at the top, we're decarbonizing transport. There's surely no greater challenge that faces the international transport ministers of today than that last battle that we continue from COP26. And so through all of these efforts, the ITF is honoring its pledge to work for transport that improves people's lives. So let us continue to keep that objective in mind as we meet here and over the next year. Let us demonstrate our determination to stand together in defense of our principles and let's do everything we can within our power to end this evil war so that we can rebuild and help to rebuild Ukraine's transport and infrastructure and that work can begin as soon as possible. Thank you. Slava Ukraine. Thank you, Secretary of State. Uh, if I could now ask Volker Vissing, Federal Minister for Digital Infrastructure and Transport Germany, to speak. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much. I have to say that ITF this year will deal with the war in Ukraine, and it's necessary that we talk with, about this openly and clearly. The attack on Ukraine is an attack on our values and on the European order of peace. The hostile threats from Russia make it clear that we have to defend peace and our, our freedom together, and we have to concentrate on that. Most countries made it clear that they, that they condemn the attack of Russia to Ukraine. The ITF has been built from the European Conference of the Transport Ministers after the, after the Second World War and they tried to rebuild the transport infrastructure in Europe. Today we are again in war in Europe due to the aggression of Vladimir Putin in Ukraine. We are on the side of Ukraine and we would like to keep on supporting Ukraine and therefore we are thinking about how we can re-establish the infrastructure in Ukraine in order to give the people in the Ukraine the possibilities of access to that. Our call to action expresses that we condemn the Russian invasion and we say clearly what happens here. President Vladimir Putin has brought war back to Europe. He has triggered a threatening humanitarian crisis and he, he has um, and Lukashenko is helping him, President Lukashenko is helping him. The transport sector can help the Ukrainian people, the refugees, to rebuild the infrastructure. The Federal Ministry of Germany will uh, contribute, contribute to um, reducing the suffering of the people there. And we are working together with other countries with the Help Ukraine tickets, for example, in order to help the refugees. Within hours, we coordinated with our partners with, in Poland in order to collect um, refugees from the Polish border to Germany and to Poland. We have built a railway bridge to Ukraine in order to deliver humanitarian goods there. And we are now working on securing a wheat bridge or a grain bridge so that the, the produce of Ukraine can be exported to other countries. This is necessary after um, Russia is blocking the Black Sea ports. We are also calling on an effort in supporting Ukraine. The ITF is the perfect platform for an international exchange about important transport topics. As a think tank, it is also perfectly prepared in order to 
coordinate the rebuilding and also to come up with uh, common standards when it comes, for example, to railway system. The railways are of an exclusive importance in the international order, and it also is making clear. Uh, it's made clear in this crisis as well. Without railways, we would have ha had much, much bigger problems. It would be. I would be happy if the German and European railway industries would show what they can do in order to reconnect Ukraine to the grid. We are working hand in hand, and we are determined in order to show Russia that Ukraine does not only defend democracy, but we are on their side. Thank you very much, Minister. If I could now ask Pete Buttigieg, Secretary of Transportation, United States, to speak. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, very pleased to be with my fellow ministers. I want to thank uh, Minister Vissing, uh, Secretary Schaps, uh, Minister Algabra, uh, Ministers Adamczyk and Skuotis, and, and all of the others who are signing today's call to action. I want to thank the staff at ITF and our own from the department working so tirelessly to help to bring this together. And a special thanks to the Ministry in Ukraine, uh, to our colleague Minister Kubrakov, uh, for the work that you are doing to maintain critical infrastructure. Uh, to innovate and find ways to keep your nation's supply chain functioning, uh, and for your clear and compelling communication with your global counterparts, helping us to find ways to be supportive. I would add it's been extraordinary to see the heroism of ordinary railway workers and others involved in transportation, uh, simply doing their jobs but risking their lives in order to do so. We are here today to express our unequivocal support for the people and the democratically elected government of Ukraine in the face of Russia's brutal, unprovoked war of aggression. And what we know today is the International Transport, Transport Forum, the ITF, as Minister Vissing noted, trace, traces its roots to the European Conference of Ministers of Transport, founded in 1953 in the shadow of a war that had killed tens of millions of people and destroyed transportation infrastructure across the continent. So the ECMT was founded to help rebuild transportation systems knowing that they were needed for people to recover and to chart a peaceful future. And now this year's forum comes at a time when Russia's brutal and unprovoked war in Ukraine has killed thousands and displaced millions. We've also seen Putin, the Russian Federation, deliberately targeting Ukraine's infrastructure, bombing bridges, destroying train stations and more in the knowledge that strong transportation systems are part of the foundation for strong and free societies. This war is anathema to the founding principles, values, and ideals of the ITF, and it violates the trust that has been built among countries, threatening the spirit of international cooperation that has underpinned the past half century. The American people and Congress are united and unequivocal in condemnation of Russia's actions, as well as in our support for the sovereign people of Ukraine. The U.S. has worked to target Russia's economy, isolate it from international institutions, and provide defensive military equipment to Ukraine from anti-air and anti-armor systems to ammunition. As of early May, the U.S. Agency for International Development and State Department have already programmed $1 billion in supplemental humanitarian assistance funds, of which $688 million provided for Ukraine and neighboring countries, with new spending occurring on a continuing rolling basis. And we have a new legislative proposal to provide more immediate support to the people and government of Ukraine. It was advanced uh, uh, through the House of Representatives and is being taken up, I believe, as we speak uh, in the U.S. Senate. For our part, our department has worked to close airspace to Russian aircraft across 14 time zones from the uh, Bering Strait to the Barents Sea. We have halted imports of Russian energy to the U.S., imposed sanctions on hundreds of Russian officials, yachts, <coughs> mansions, and private jets uh, of Russian oligarchs uh, in the work of uh, our uh, colleagues at the Treasury Department. We and our allies will continue working to keep civilians safe to support refugees and internally displaced people, and to provide food, water, and medicine to those who need them the most. As transport ministers, we believe we can focus on three things here at the same time. Immediate infrastructure needs to address the humanitarian crisis and enable supplies and material to move. 
Second, urgent infrastructure needs to keep Ukraine's economy running in the here and now, delivering grain and other resources that the rest of the world needs and income to help to finance the war effort. And third, the massive long-term rebuilding of infrastructure that will be needed as Ukraine emerges from the destruction that the Kremlin has wrought. In the aftermath of the Second World War, everyone understood that transportation infrastructure was vital for the safe movement of people, the delivery of humanitarian necessities, and the creation of an international community committed to peace and cooperation. And we know that when Putin's war ends, we will be standing with our partners, our friends, and the ITF to support Ukraine in that recovery and in that rebuilding toward a better day. Thank you, Secretary Buttigieg. Uh, and next, uh, Andrzej Bittel, Secretary of State in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Poland. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, dear ministers. Poland, as many other countries of the transportation community, strongly condemns a brutal aggression of Russia on Ukraine, supported by Belarus. It is not only violation of international law, but also it is against the fundamental rules on which uh, our forum is based. Uh, the Russian invasion on Ukraine puts uh, ahead of our transportation um, family some challenges like efficient organizing and transportation of a huge number of war refugees from Ukraine. And this is what is happening now. More than 400,000 Ukrainian refugees, vast majority uh, female and children, were using Ukrainian railways to travel to Poland out of 3.3 uh, million uh, refugees, a huge group. Uh, together with our German colleagues, and thank you, um, Mr. Volker Wiesing, uh, went to Germany or to the Czech Republic, as also our Czech colleagues are strongly involved in this cooperation. And this is the challenge which clearly demonstrates uh, that uh, together we are stronger and we can complete huge uh, things uh, which we wouldn't be able to do. Uh, not being together. Another challenge, this is a railway and road transportation of humanitarian aid and military support. Um, we need to change uh, the supply chains from uh, Ukrainian ports to other directions, particularly uh, because of grain, as blockages disable uh, regular transport. The Russian blockage disables normal regular transport. It is very important not only for Ukraine, not only for Europe, but also worldwide. And it should be a huge priority for us because of the scope of challenges we are facing. These actions will require uh, cooperation of international commun community, not only to support uh, Ukraine, but also other states supporting Ukraine. Uh, it is also about financial support. A Ukrainian war, a uh, Russian war in Ukraine, it is also um, a huge uh, challenge for our organization. The transportation system and infrastructure are significantly affected by the Russian invasion. It is true for Ukraine. It is true for neighboring countries of Ukraine and the European and world transportation system. There are plenty of challenges, uh, and some of them are not clear now. So this is why I'm very happy that uh, tomorrow in the morning, uh, in the round table, uh, organized big, uh, under the initiative of Minister Andrzej Adamczyk, we will have our transportation community to find the best possible solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. And next, uh, Marius Skouodis, Minister of Transport and Communications, Lithuania. So thank you very much. Supporting everything what my colleagues have just said, I would like to focus on one particular issue that many of you stressed, the issue of Ukrainian ports. We all know that Ukraine is the major exporter of grain and other agricultural products. And Ukrainian agricultural products are needed 
globally. We have no replacement here. If we look at the last year's Ukrainian harvest, Ukraine still has almost 30 million tons of grain, which needs to be exported. Despite the war, constant bombing, labor shortages, and other challenges, this year's harvest could bring another 50 million tons. To put it in perspective, the largest wheat importer, Egypt, imports around 13 million tons. China imports around 10 million tons of grain. And if we look at the United Nations food program, almost half of all food for the program comes from Ukraine. And there is no replacement. What we are having at the moment, because of Russia's aggression and Russia's blockade of Ukrainian ports, we experience significant increase of food prices, availability shortages, and all of this really threatens global food security. Over the past month, a lot of countries, international institutions, conducted contingency planning how to help finding alternative routes for Ukraine. We did it in the Baltic states together with Poland and our Ukrainian colleagues. And there are three options how to solve the issue. One option is train transportation of grain to the west, to Poland. But there we have significant technical barriers because of differences in rail gauges and so on. And because of that, the amounts that could be exported are really limited. Then the second option is to transport through Belarus to the Baltic countries, and the ports have capacity. But we know what Belarus is doing. Belarus made themselves participant in the war by allowing Russian troops to attack Ukraine from its territory, not to mention what we had a year ago, forcefully landed Ryanair flight, a lot of migrants that are gathered and pushed to cross the European Union border. And this option doesn't seem to be viable because we as international community, we cannot make, make any concessions here. Then the third viable option is to unblock Ukrainian ports. And first of all, I truly believe that we need to start with Odessa port. This could meet the capacity issues, the amounts that need to be exported, and only then we could ensure that we don't have food security issues. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Minister. And finally, uh, Omar Al-Gabra, Minister of Transport, Canada. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of uh, the government of Canada and the people of Canada. Canada strongly condemns President Putin's unprovoked and illegal invasion of Ukraine. This hostile act is an unprecedented threat to world security. It is a blatant, blatant violation of international law and the rules-based international order. Canada calls on Russia to immediately seize all hostile and provocative actions against Ukraine. We also insist that Russia withdraw all military and proxy forces. Ukraine is a sovereign country and its territory must be respected. The Ukrainian people must be free to determine their own future. This war has caused unnecessary loss of life, forced millions to leave their homes, and created incredible hardship for the Ukrainian people. In response, the Government of Canada has taken strong and, dis and decisive action. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine on February 24, Canada has sanctioned over 1,000 individuals and entities from Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. We've also provided humanitarian funding for emergency health and protection services to meet essential needs like shelter, water, sanitation, and food. On the transportation side, we have closed our airspace to all Russian-owned 
chartered or operated aircraft in Canadian airspace. We've also banned Russian-owned or registered ships and fishing vessels in Canadian waters and at our ports. We are constantly assessing the situation and stand ready to provide more assistance as needed. The ITF can contribute to Ukraine's rebuilding and recovery. The call to action commits to ending ITF cooperation with Russia and Belarus. And it calls on the ITF to offer its expertise in helping rebuild Ukrainian transport systems. To Minister Kobrakov and Ukrainian people, I want to assure you that in this forum and beyond, Canada will support the Ukrainian people in the face of this illegal war. Our commitment to peace will not be broken. Canada stands with Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ministers. Uh, we now have a short amount of time for questions. I should say there is a hard stop of 25 past two as Ministers need to get to the next plenary session. And can I also say, please don't direct your questions at Irina. She's not able to answer them in the absence of her Minister. But uh, the rest of the panel is fair game. Who'd like to go first? I can only assume that the ministers have made their position so clear <laughs> there are no questions for them. Anybody? This is like an auction. Shall I say going, <laughs> going, gone. I'm glad it was all so clear for you. Thank you. I was in Canada when you only have the formation of the government for uh, last was, year? Yeah, last yes. year. In autumn last year. Yep. So. I, okay. 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 <laughs> 